I never had an easy time developing my back. It was always very challenging. My back was way behind the rest of my body. So I had to get a little creative with my exercises. Now, I'm showing you the exercises I really do. I'm not making these up just because they look different or whatever. This is what I really did to really help build my back. And as you know, the Meadows Row, of course named after me, is number one on my list because it really, really helped put a lot of thickness on my entire back. I mean, if you watch and you look at the grip, uh, the, 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 um, the, the pronated grip, you would think this is more for rhomboids, kind of some lower traps and rear delts. But depending on where you drive your elbows, you're also feeling your lats. So for me, I never really did this for just lats or just rhomboids. It, to me, I felt these in my entire back. So form is key, obviously. You gotta drive your elbow like I'm always preaching on back. You wanna brace yourself with your other arm. Some people like to set a bench up and put their opposite hand on a bench for bracing, but I feel, I don't like that because I feel the exercise in my waist too much when I do that. Um, I don't know why, I just do. And I don't, I'm not trying to train my waist. So uh, we're doing them here on a landmine, but there are other options too. So you might wanna do these on a T-bar, for example. And I got a T-bar right here. This is another option, doing them like this on a T-bar. You may have a supported chest row. The very first time I ever did these was actually on a supported chest row. So uh, you could also stick a bar kind of in a corner of, in your gym. Some people do it that way. So exercise number one is the good old basic Meadows row to thicken your entire back. Okay, so I mentioned that uh, the Meadows row really helped my back thickness. Another exercise that really helped was this one arm barbell row. And uh, I remember I did these for the first time in 2002, actually, as I was training for nationals in Dallas, Texas. I started doing these. Um, these also felt great. Now this is more lat specific. So not so much rhomboids and lower traps, although I think you do get a little bit of rhomboid. Um, these I really feel a lot in my lower lats and even all the way down to my lower lat. Fantastic row. Uh, again, brace with your opposite arm. Don't, don't make it a balancing exercise. Again, some people use a bench. I don't like that. I feel too much of my waist. And then on these, I would use straps. I should have mentioned that on the Meadows row too. You're gripping the thick end of the bar, so make sure you use straps. But this one arm barbell row, it's very taxing. Uh, I'm still out of breath. I just did my last set. Great exercise though. Give these a shot and I think you're gonna like them. All right, exercise number three is a dumbbell pullover. Now. If uh, equipment wasn't an issue, if you could have any kind of equipment you wanted, I would go with a Nautilus pullover machine. In fact, a Nautilus pullover machine might be my number one exercise for back. Uh, it probably would be. There's nothing like an awesome Nautilus pullover machine. But I realize most of you don't have one. So I'm gonna say a dumbbell pullover. Uh, these have always been a part of my back routines. Um, I lay on a bench instead of across it you could do it either way. I just feel like the range of motion is a little bit easier if I'm laying on the bench. And uh, you know, good for upper lats, serratus, teres, all those little muscles. Just a great exercise it's to stretch everything out as well. Um, it should be in, it, it should be a, a part of your back program. Absolutely, for everybody. So that's exercise number three. So in addition to just showing you seven exercises, one fun thing you might wanna try and this would absolutely work, is make this a workout. So do one, once you get warmed up, do one kind of, kind of hard set uh, on each exercise, something where maybe you don't go quite to failure. And then on the next set, make it a really hard working set and go all the way to failure. So essentially you would do a 14 set back workout. Seven of the sets would be pretty hard. And then, and then the other seven would be to failure. And um, that actually would be a brutal back workout. And that's kind of what we're doing today. Some of the exercises I won't go to failure, but um, you can absolutely turn this into a wicked back workout if you want. All right, number four is a rack pull. Now, um, I don't have a rack at this gym, so uh, just use your imagination. Pretend there's a, pretend I'm in a power rack and I'm setting the bar down on each rep. Because that's what I do. I like to set the bar down. I don't like to bounce it off the rack. I know a lot of people like to do that. I don't think that's wise for your spine. So I do like to get to about mid shin or maybe slightly above mid shin. I don't like to pull above your knee. I just don't think that's enough range of motion to do anything meaningful. So rack pulls in terms of form, this is where 
uh, what we do is a little different. So you have a standard kind of rack pull where you just grip it and rip it for pure strength. But we're using a little different form on this for technique, technique wise. You're probably going to want to use about half the weight you normally use when you're doing a grip and rip it technique. Um, basically what we're doing is we're flexing our lats at the bottom while the bar is sitting in the rack and you pull the bar up and you push your hips forward and you even, it, it almost looks like a backward shrug. So watch, watch my form as, as I did those. So I'm standing up straight and then I'm pulling my elbows back. So my elbows come back. Now I know gravity's up and down. It's not, it's not lateral, but just trust me, just try it. Uh, and then lower the weight. You got to keep your lats flexed and lower the weight slowly. So you're going to generate a lot of tension in your lats. It's not a range of motion exercise. It's almost like an ISO hold, although you do get a little bit of shoulder extension for your lats or uh, arm extension, I should say, whatever. Um, but these feel really good, uh, particularly when you use this form. So this is another exercise I really, really like, rack pulls. All right, number five is probably what I would call the most underrated back exercise, and it's banded pull-ups. Um, I absolutely love these. It's a, you gotta do them to know what I mean. There's like a unique pump you get uh, that, that just feels, it's very unique. I don't really get a pump in the area uh, on the other exercises that I get on this one. So it's a banded pull-up. Now, I'm using the orange band. If you are weaker, you could use like an elite gray band. If you're strong on chins, you could use one of their uh, pro mini bands, a red one. I typically use the orange one, but uh, the band size is gonna matter. You wanna get to where you're doing, I like kind of medium reps. I like kind of the 10 to 12 range for reps on these, but I really like these. You can execute these with perfect form due to the band. And the other thing I find is, you know, I think when people do a lot of chin ups, they tend to get tendonitis a lot um, in their forearms or elbow kind of area. But there's something about doing these with a band where I've ne I never get tendonitis myself and the people I, I work with don't either. So. That's always a good thing. Plus again, you can exercise, you can execute with perfect form. So number five, banded chin-ups. Size is a single arm supinated pull down. Now, form is critical in this. I see a lot of people kind of sitting up straight and they just kind of pull their, pull the weight down. It's really, it's a bicep exercise. So you want to lean back a little bit. If you watch how I'm doing these, I'm leaning back a little bit and really focus on driving your elbow down. Don't focus on pulling with your bicep. Focus on driving your elbow down. And then you'll see at the bottom, I even get a little, it's lateral spinal flexion. So I'm even tilting to the side that I'm pulling with a slight little bit and I'm really flexing my lower lats. And in terms of the grip, um, I like that free, that handle where I can move my wrist freely. So I drive down into supination, but um, you know, do, do whatever's comfortable for you. I would encourage you to play around with the grip and whether you're fully supinating, semi-supinating, just play around with it. And the other thing I would say is I'm pretty fortunate to have this type of pull down. If you notice, there's two different pulleys and they're lined up directly. So I'm pulling straight down. If you have only one pulley in the middle, it makes it a little bit more awkward to pull down to one side. So that is something to notice and it does help having the dual pulley where each side you can pull straight down. It's in the middle, it's a little more awkward. So anyways. That's exercise number six. Okay, exercise number seven, another tough one. Whew, I just wrapped up my second set of nose. A barbell hyperextension, um, use a wide grip. That's to let you get more range of motion. And this is gonna sound just the opposite, but try to use bigger plates so you don't go down as low. So I'm not trying to load the spine when I'm really stretched out the bottom. I'm trying to make it more of a a contraction exercise, if that makes sense. So get your hands out wide so you can pull up a little higher, but use bigger plates so you don't go down as low. Um, that's one way to do it. If you wanna do them really light, then by all means, you know, go down lower. But I like to load these up with a little bit of weight. They're also really good for your glutes and hams. But uh, barbell hyperextensions, you gotta train those spinal erectors, and those are an absolutely brutal way to do it those will put slabs of muscle in your spinal erectors. 